The starting block is brought to you by Ron Carter Cadillac. She's been a winning championship. I think I uh, have a great organization here, a uh, great group of guys, um, great front office, uh, great coaching as well. And um, I think it's a great opportunity to be able to uh, bring a championship here to Houston. The Rockets made it official, uh, introducing Russell Westbrook to media on Friday afternoon at Toyota Center. It was a subdued gathering, unlike the street rally and near circus gatherings when they welcomed Dwight Howard and Chris Paul to town. I caught up with Daryl Morey to get his take on the new look Rockets. Oh, we're here with Daryl Morey on the day that you guys introduced Russell Westbrook, your newest superstar acquisition. You've done this many times. Uh, it's kind of quiet around here. I mean. Often you have parades and oh, yes, celebrations. Yes. I think, <laughs> Why the difference this time? I think we've uh, uh, modified our approach. We're we're we're, <laughs> we're saving the parades. I think I think that was your article, right? Indeed. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, now we know we're in trouble. We're listening to you. It sounds like. So. <laughs> well, no, you get in there now. You brought in one of my favorite <laughs> players, and and clearly. Westbrook is a guy that if you have a chance to add him to your team, it, it's pretty much a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. I mean, if you win the MVP, you're pretty pretty good at basketball. And uh, we also we look for guys with extreme talent who we think can even be better when they're with us. And I think he's he fits that. Mm. You, he's talking about the team in Houston. He's only concerned about what you guys are doing. You're in a position where you actually do have to be concerned about what other teams are doing. What is your open analysis of what's happened and transpired in off season so far. Yeah, I think it's better, obviously. I mean, people are counting out Golden State. I mean, they still have like Curry and Draymond for sure. And maybe some of those other, maybe, maybe Clay gets back, but, but um, no, it's, it's, it's better. Cause you know, if you have one team that's got a 65% chance to win the title, it doesn't leave much left for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's going to be, you know, five or six teams that have a real, real shot in the West alone. Um, we got to separate ourselves from the pack. Yeah. And when you try to figure out how to make that separation, you, you have a ready made roster pretty much. I mean, there's not a lot of room to, to add, et cetera, but you've been trying to add some pieces at the bottom more of guys who will play 10, 12 minutes maybe, but that can be important. Yeah, we're hoping. We, we, we need another, like, Daniel House to emerge, another. Yeah, so we're going to bring in a bunch of young guys and hope they fight over things and we can get a real solid player to, to come in and help us. Uh, but otherwise, you're right. I mean, we got a great starting starting five. We really feel good about Austin, Daniel, and Tyson. Uh, and then Mike only plays seven guys anyway, so we're done. So no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, only in the playoffs. No. Yeah, yeah, no. We got you know Gerald obviously uh, gives us huge minutes always. So yeah, it's going to be hard for anyone to break in, but uh, that's a good thing. And finally, keeping your star player happy is always important in the NBA, and we see guys asking out of contracts. Clearly, James Harden is pleased to have Westbrook join him. Yeah, I mean, it's been such a great partnership with James since the beginning. Um, and as you can tell, that's not a given in today's NBA. Uh, you've got to always be competing, always be working with your top players, or, or they are going to you know, want to be somewhere else. And so we're, I think that's appropriate. I think we're cognizant of that. I think my job is to always put, put James and, uh, and now Russell in a chance in a position where they have a chance to win the title. One final thing, I know you're a numbers guy. I've seen computer models giving you 58 wins and in that ballpark, and then I see the Vegas guys have a measly 52, 52 and a half in some places. That, that seems a little low. Yeah, I mean, I'm here. We're not as worried about the regular season anymore. We're we're worried about how do we create the best path to win the title and have our guys peaking in in April. Uh, I would say Vegas is pretty darn good. When you start betting money, people get pretty good at it. It seems like what they're basically saying is that no team's really going to be able to separate the too many good teams. Too many teams focused on the title, so I think they're mostly saying like we don't really know. Like most of these teams are going to be 50 to 55 wins, and we'll, one of them will probably really emerge and take off and win 60. Hopefully that's us. Uh, one of them's probably going to tail off. Hopefully that's not us. Uh, and and uh, it yeah mostly I when I saw the over unders which came out like yesterday or the day before, uh, it felt like they were mostly going doing the shrug emoji. We don't know. <laughs> so so. But to be a champion, you've always said you've got to be in the 
mid fifties and higher. That's correct. Yeah, to, to win the title historically, it's almost impossible if you're not above fifty-five. You're watching Houston Sports Show, presented by Ron Carter Cadillac.